Hello basketball fans and welcome to a new season of Mustang Basketball with Brad Bigler. I'm your host Kelly Loft, Athletic Communications Director at Southwest Minnesota State University and it's that time of the year SMSU men's basketball is underway as the regular season gets started for the Mustangs on November the 12th with the non-conference game at Wisconsin-Milwaukee. There's lots to talk about on this week's show. We'll preview this upcoming season's basketball team here at SMSU. We'll talk about the game against Milwaukee on Saturday and look ahead to the conference season and a whole lot more here throughout this uh, 2011 and 12 basketball season. And joining us here for the third season is Brad Bigler, the head coach for the SMSU men's basketball team. And, and uh, as we talked about, the Mustangs have started the season already. You've had a few weeks under your belt to practice, a couple of exhibition games, uh, one against Colorado State. We'll take a look at those highlights from Fort Collins here later on in the show. But Brad, third season as head coach, and uh, it's always got to be exciting to get back on the floor. And you guys have been practicing now for you know over a month or so, or even longer than that with some of the rule changes in NCAA. But it's got to be fun to be back out there and, uh, and teaching the game of basketball. It has been. It's been fun uh, knowing what to expect. I remember last year at this time, <clears throat> nine new guys on the roster and there was a lot of unknowns where this year we have a lot of returning veterans uh, or guys who played a lot of minutes last year. And uh, like you said, the rules change early in the fall. Uh, we were able to practice and that, uh, that gave us a jump start. I think when October 15th came around and allowed us to hit the ground running. Yeah, let's talk about uh, some of those rule changes that you mentioned. October 15th used to be the kind of the official day of basketball <laughs> practice, and that's when a lot of Midnight Madness shows or, you know, <laughs> programs go on for basketball programs. But talk about some of the changes that the NCAA uh, allowed this year for basketball practices for both women and men's basketball. At the Division II level, uh, they allowed us to, to have full team practices uh, for two hours a week. Uh, we chose to go two 45-minute practices with one 30-minute skill development. And I think uh, we utilized our time well. Uh, we put in some new offensive system. And I think our guys adjusted to it very well. well of course, the Mustangs uh, coming off a season a year ago, finished 12-14 and 14 overall, 9-13 and 13 in the conference, tied for eighth place in the NSIC, just missing a conference tournament berth. And uh, Coach, uh, you know, a lot of returning letter winners back, guys that have experience. We do miss a couple of uh, outstanding players from a year ago, and Taylor Hughesby and Scott Rail, who have uh, both graduated. But let's talk about uh, some of the guys here returning this year. Obviously, Jordan Miller is your top returning scorer and also three-point shooter. You've got a couple of seniors on this year's squad. Uh, you know, talk about some of those guys that Mustang fans are, are familiar with and, and what they've done in this offseason to get ready for this season. Uh, we can start off with Jordan Miller. Uh, like like out of Colorado State, uh, Jordan is a guy who uh, knocked down quite a few shots. He's added even more to his game. And a lot of it comes back to uh, in the offseason, he worked pretty well. Uh, he got in the weight room, gained some weight, and he looks really good right now. And it starts with him. I thought Tramel Barnes was another guy who stayed here in Marshall this summer. Uh, looks really good coming off the coming off the summer. A guy who would be a nice addition to the team uh, to complement Bernard Birch at the point guard spot. I think both Bernard and Tramel give us uh, two very good athletes at that spot who can defend at a high level and create easy opportunities for teammates. Uh, other guys on the wing you look at Matt Zager, Trent Carlson, both guys who have logged a lot of minutes last year and two guys that we'll expect uh, to take on bigger roles this year. And then at the forward spot, right now we have a battle between Lavion West, Will Giddings, and Casey Susan Guth. And all three of them bring a little bit different things to the table. And, and all three of them right now are playing at a pretty high level. We talk about uh, Tramel Barnes, a junior from Montevideo, played two years at Northern mm -hmm. State, and, uh, transferred to Southwest, and had to sit out last year. And mm -hmm. Talk about the, the dimension that he brings. You talked about helping out Bernard Birch at the mm -hmm. backup point guard position because last year, not only you know, having, it affected so many things of your game because Jordan Miller played the point, but he's also your shooting guard, and it just affected the whole lineup. And having Tramel come in there as a point guard is really going to help, but not only you know the point guard play, but all the other four positions. And I think at times last year we did ask a little too much out of Jordan Miller. Uh, this will allow him to be that playmaker on the wing. It'll take the ball out of his hands uh, on, a, on a little bit more of a, you know, where Tramel and Bernard can uh, kind of take that role. But at the same time, we want to get the ball in Jordan's hands. We want to be able to, to get him in situations where he can score the basketball. 
Now you mentioned uh, quite a few of the guys, uh, you know, the big guys in the middle, everybody's uh, curious with you, Nick Smith and uh, also a couple of new guys as well. Nick, obviously a sophomore, played as a true freshman a, a season ago. He can shoot from the outside as well and hit that jump shot, but you also have some more players. You mentioned Susan Guth as well that helps some size, and, and then also Mike Apple as well. Talk about uh, uh, that newcomer, Mike Apple, to the team. Uh, yeah, the addition of Michael Apple and then the skill set of Nick Smith has really changed uh, how we play the game on the offensive end. Uh, I think right now you'll see us spreading the basketball out a little bit more, uh, early ball screen action, and because of their ability to knock down that perimeter shot, the spacing is, is different, and that opens up the floor for guys like Tremel and Bernard to be able to get to the rim, and when they get to the rim, they have the ability to finish or they create free, uh, easy opportunities for their teammates. We'll talk about uh, guys like uh, Bernard Birch and, and Nick Smith and guys that can you see the development, you know, just from their freshman mm -hmm. year to sophomore year. Now they kind of understand what's going on in the college game now that we have a, a, an exhibition game under our belt. Yeah, I think anytime you, you look at those true freshmen playing early in their career, a lot of times they're, they're thinking and not reacting. And I think now you see them as in their second year, they logged a lot of minutes, played a lot of close ball games, and I think what you see is now they have just the, they're they're more natural. Uh, they react. Uh, they have the ability to just kind of to have more confidence and to play the game uh, the way the game is meant to be played. Well, you look at uh, some of the upperclassmen on this year's squad. We mentioned Van uh, Jordan Miller and you know and some others, but guys like Lavion West are I mean, very critical to your team this year. And Trent Carlson, you know, a fifth year senior that's uh, you know been through the the ups and downs of the program, and uh, which are you know obviously a lot more ups. But uh, talk about the, those guys. There's just this year's team. There's not really that one standout player. Obviously, Jordan Miller is very good you know, scoring wise, but uh, it's a really a, a team effort here to, to be successful this season. And we've seen that early on. Uh, we had a scrimmage early on where uh, we had a lot of guys step up and knock shots. Trent Carlson, Matt Zagger stepped up and knock shots in the scrimmage, and then we went out to Colorado State, and Jordan Miller had 25 points had a very good offensive effort, as well as Nick, Nick Smith having a pretty good game himself. So I think that'll be something as we get going on here and roles are getting defined, I think we'll see certain guys being able to step up at different times. Well, it's been a very busy uh, preseason for the Mustang men's basketball team. As you mentioned, a scrimmage uh, back in uh, mid-October against a, a couple of different programs from the upper Midwest. And then had the alumni game on Andy Wiersma Day, and that was uh, fun to see a lot of those alums come back. And one thing about that game, Coach, uh, it wasn't just a here's the ball and go play you know, you know, an easy game. Uh, the alumni have some pride, and they, they want to win the basketball game. And they did uh, beat SMSU last year, the alumni did. But uh, this year, the Mustangs came out on top. But uh, that's a very good, a great mm -hmm. day, obviously, to, to remember Andy Wiersma. Uh, but uh, just very competitive basketball. And you can see some of the great players that have come through SMSU. And, and all those guys right now are still 24, 25, 26. So they're still, in my opinion, still in their prime. But... I think the thing that you notice and we all notice is they're very competitive and the game becomes very physical uh, right from the get-go. And uh, so, yeah, it, it was a great game. Our, our guys it, it did prepare us for Colorado State going up against Jeremy Van Klotenberg, Nick Dale, those, diff those guys of size where then when we went out to Colorado State and faced a seven-footer who's 280, I don't think just his, you know, that first impression, I don't think our guys were as intimidating. Well, again, as you, as Coach mentioned, uh, Mustangs took on the uh, alumni that Sunday in Marshall and then went to Colorado State this past uh, su uh, Saturday for an exhibition game against uh, the Division I Rams, who last year played in the NIT and uh, had a very good program going there. Tim Miles, of course, the former coach at SMSU and a former head coach for Brad Bigler, and uh, that was a great opportunity for the guys to, to go out there and, and, and take on a good Rams squad, and that's exactly what you wanted was to – just get your team prepared uh, for this regular season. And I think early on, when you can go up against a team like Colorado State, uh, they're going to break you down. They're going to you're going to see your weaknesses, and and that's what they did. Uh, they made us uh, defend ball screens. They made us defend the paint, and they also they showed that we need to improve in the rebounding area. So they they, they without question we learned a lot from that experience. It was a lot of fun for myself just to go out there and and again get a chance to talk with Coach Miles the night before the game. Uh, we had a chance to, to do some chalk talk, and I learned a lot from him, and, 
and uh, I appreciate everything that he's uh, that he's done for us. Well, you are watching Mustang Basketball with Brad Bigler here on Studio One and at smsumustangs.com. We appreciate you joining us again this season for an exciting season of Mustang men's basketball. As we mentioned, the Mustangs open up the regular season on Saturday, November 12th at Wisconsin-Milwaukee, a Division I program out of the Horizon League who won the Horizon League last year and made it to the NIT. And, of course, the Horizon coach, uh, Hunter Butler, national runners-up the past two years, uh, the same conference as Butler and uh, Milwaukee won that conference uh, this past season. And we'll talk about that later on in this, uh, in this show, but uh, let's talk about your non-conference schedule. There's not many non-conference games. You get 26 regular season games. We have 22 in the NSIC, and you have four non-conference games. Play two Division ones. You play an exhibition against a Division one, and then have two very good Division two teams as well. And uh, as always, a very difficult schedule put together by uh, you know started with Greg Steeman, and now you continuing that trend. And and like I learned from Coach Steeman, I think you want to put those guys in a situation where they're challenged earlier. Uh, I think last year when we played Northwest Missouri State twice, I think that did help us out, especially in that opening weekend versus August, Augustine and Wayne State. Uh, we were game ready. We were ready for battle and. And I think that's kind of the, the thought process behind it where you want to challenge our guys. You want to kind of get them out of their comfort zone. And those games are going to do that. Going into the weekend uh, with the University of Milwaukee, uh, that's going to be a team that's going to pressure us, a team that's going to get up into us. And it'll be, it'll be neat to, to see how our guys adjust to that. And guys like Tramel Barnes, Bernard Birch will be key factors to this weekend's game. Well, again, as you mentioned, the Mustangs did have an exhibition game in Fort Collins, Colorado on uh, November the 5th, a uh, game out at Moby Arena in Fort Collins. Mustangs left on late Thursday night, traveled throughout all Friday morning, got there Friday and uh, you know got some practice in and then took on the Rams on the uh, Saturday in Moby Arena. Let's take a look at the highlights from the ball game against the Colorado State University Rams. And Mustangs lost 83-70 coach, but very good first half, and uh, Jordan Miller really leading the way here to this afternoon in this ball game. And the, the way Jordan got it done, not only was he knocking down shots, but he, as you'll see on the clips, he was finding players. You'll see right here he finds Nick Smith on a, on a little uh, screen and roll type action. Uh, Nick goes up and, and gets fouled. Mustangs uh, trailed 42-41 at halftime, shot very well from the field at 56%. And uh, we look over here, there's the newcomer, Michael Apple, with the three-pointer off the pass from Tramel Barnes. And we expect to see that quite a bit this year. And that's just, you're seeing here our, our action, being able to just space the floor, trying to make, uh, you know, set people up to be in successful situations. Uh, giving Bernard and Tramel an open lane to be able to attack. And then our five men just, by being out of the three-point line, they can knock down shots. And you see a drive-by, Bernard Birch, beautiful up and under move for two of his eight points in the game. He also had about five or six assists. There's a three-pointer up and good for the Mustangs for Trent Carlson. And then a steal here for Bernard Birch. Good patience on the break. He's, I think he identified Jordan on the wing right away. Just kind of set it up. Good patience. Let Jordan set his feet. Mustang six of 12 from behind the arc in the first 20 minutes. And here's a post feed into Nick Smith. Shot up no good for the Mustangs to get foul. And here's William Giddings, another player that's going to be key for the Mustangs this season, Coach. And Giddings was very efficient with his minutes versus Colorado State. Uh, we went with a, a smaller lineup, a four-guard lineup, so he didn't get as many minutes. But uh, when he was in the game, he, he got some steals. He got some action to the rim and uh, rebound the basketball. So Matt Zager hit a three, and here's uh, Nick Smith opening up that game. Uh, the ability to shoot that long-range three uh, for the big man is great to see. And there's another great pass from Bernard Birch to Susan Guth. And here's Bernard again making something happen. And, and there's where uh, Bernard's time spent in the gym. Uh, he's a guy who's putting a lot of time with that shot. And, and you've, you've seen it early in the year where he's been able to knock down that uh, 15 to 17 foot footer pretty consistently. Here's a great play there for the Mustangs. Just unselfish play, an extra pass to Miller for three. And, Here's Jordan now making a pass into Nick Smith right underneath the basket. And I know Coach Miles is not happy with his team defense in this first half, and you're getting some pretty good looks. Yeah, I think what we saw in that first half is Coach Miles uh, did make some adjustments on how to handle ball screens. They were, they were creative in how they did it. And I think in the second half they kind of figured some things out, which 
give them credit, uh, which allowed them to get the momentum in the second half to win the ball game. Laviano West driving to the rack here in the second half, fouled, couldn't get it to go, and then Jordan Miller hits a three. Mustangs, though, cooled off in the second half, just 28% shooting uh, from the field. And as you mentioned, uh, the Rams made some adjustments, and uh, you're back and forth there for a while in the second half, but a, a run midway through the, the second half gave the Rams a, a double-digit lead, and they were able to hold on. Here's a steal by William Giddings, and then the Mustangs come back the other way, Bernard Birch with a steal, and then two points in transition. And again, just another example of Bernard being able to step up and knock down that 15-footer. Uh, throughout the second half, uh, a combination of us just missing some layups and, and missing some open threes, but also, you know, Colorado State just putting them a little more pressure, uh, bringing, uh, bringing that pressure from different people, and uh, just really finishing possessions better than we did. There's Apple with the two of his five. Here's Bernard Birch. Nice slip over to Nick Smith. It goes in a little pick and roll, and then Miller capping off his day with a three-pointer. Again, 25 points, four trays in the ball game and a great pass from Trent Carlson. Makes the move, hits it on the wing, and then we'll wrap it up here with the uh, Bernard Birch drive to the basket as well. Good spacing by SMSU. And, uh, so, so good highlights for this exhibition game. Mustangs uh, do lose, though, as you mentioned, 83 to 70. Mustangs fall in that exhibition co contest against the Rams. That was their second game against D Division II, and uh, they're now 2-0, our Colorado State, in their exhibition season. One thing from this ball game, Coach, uh, you know, it, and it's obviously a very physical team, but obviously rebounding, SMSU out-rebounded almost 2-1 to one margin, 42-22. And, you know, that's kind of been uh, the Mustang basketball way the past uh, five years or so has been rebounding. And uh, I'm sure we probably won't face a team like as physical as the Rams throughout the season. But, uh, you know, that's just something those guys are going to probably have to learn and just continue to crash the boards and be smart about getting to, to getting to those loose balls. And I think part of that came back to they shot the ball at a pretty high level. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the offensive rebounds area, they, they were up 14-9 to nine on us. Uh, but on the defensive side of the ball, that's where we were not getting stops. Uh, they got a lot of action to the rim. They were scoring at a pretty high level. And if they weren't scoring, uh, they were getting fouled and going to the free throw line. So I, I think all in all, our defensive effort, uh, like I said, you, there's a reason why you go up against these teams like this. That way uh, you got to improve on the defensive end, and that's where it starts for us right now and, and breaking down that film and using that film to get better. Well, again, a couple of other changes. We've talked about some of the new players on this year's squad that uh, you'll be seeing at the RA facility uh, this weekend. The Mustangs, uh, or this season, I should say, uh, SMSU uh, did have an exhibition game on November 8th against St. Olaf, a Division Three school. And the Mustangs, though, will not be at home until uh, the second weekend of December will be their home opener as they start conference play at home against St. Cloud State. It'll be their second weekend of conference play. So won't be able to see the Mustangs here for a while, but... Uh, Still lots of exciting things going on for the program. And uh, again, they start off the season on November 12th at Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And before we uh, look at that ball game, Coach, just mentioned some of the newcomers uh, player-wise, but also have a couple changes on the coaching staff as well. Talk about the two new members of your staff here in 2011-12. Uh, in, in the spring, we, we got an addition. Uh, Brooks McCowan is now our new top assistant. Uh, Brooks comes from us from uh, DMAC University down in uh, Des Moines. Uh, junior college and uh, he's a guy that has some experience in the Midwest he played college basketball at Northern Iowa after his playing career was done he ended up coaching at Northern Iowa as an ops and, and a film guy for a little bit and I think that's kind of where his roots come from uh, the funny story behind Brooks and myself is probably more so with our fathers uh, back when we were both little and, and matter of fact I don't even know if he was born yet mm -hmm. but uh, our, fi our fathers were rivals uh, and we, our towns were about 10 miles apart. I never actually knew Brooks back then, but uh, uh, that's just kind of the funny story behind it all. Uh, the other guy would be Travis Carroll. Travis Carroll is originally from Fulda, Minnesota. He was a guy who was actually coaching down in Texas, and he has been a great addition. Travis is a guy who's also a Southwest alum, a guy that I've known for a long time, and a, and a guy that I trust. Uh, it should be an exciting uh, season. Very good addition uh, to the Mustang coaching staff as uh, they're on the uh, on the road, it seems like always recruiting and uh, getting ready for this 2011-12 uh, season. Again, the Mustangs uh, opening up this Saturday afternoon, a uh, 1 o'clock start in Milwaukee. Let's talk about that game, Coach, and uh, obviously a 
first time we ever faced this squad. They're a Division One team, and mm -hmm. we you know appreciate them you know getting the game hooked mm -hmm. up with us. Not many Division Ones will do that, but um, you know it's a, a game. Obviously, we're underdogs and uh, playing against a very good team. Uh, that, uh, that's got some postseason aspirations. Let's talk about uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and some of the things that the Panthers uh, bring to the table. Uh, on defense, I think that's where I'll start. I, I think they're known as being a very physical team. They're going to get up and get after you a little bit. Uh, I know they're going to have some very good athletes, and we're going to have to be able to adjust to their athleticism. Hopefully, hopefully on the offensive end for us that we're disciplined and we can handle their pressure. Maybe we can use that against them occasionally. But uh, we also have to be able to knock down shots. And like we did against Colorado State in the first half, we shared the basketball, we made the extra pass, and we knocked down those wide open threes. Uh, we'll have to do that again this weekend versus Milwaukee. Uh, on the defensive end, uh, we're going to be able, you know, we'll play our system defense. We'll also try to apply pressure. Uh, we'll defend at a pretty high level. We have to be better with our rotations, and we have to be better at finishing up possessions. Well, it should be fun. First time the Mustangs have ever faced uh, Milwaukee in uh, men's basketball. And again, that'll be a 1 o'clock start on Saturday in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Mustangs will then have a couple of weeks off from playing, and they'll be back in action on Thanksgiving weekend in Bemidji at the Bemidji State Classic. They'll take on Michigan Tech and Minot State. And then we'll start conference play the first weekend of December at Augustana and at Wayne State. And then you have a non-conference game against South Dakota State, another Division One program, before coming home for those uh, regular season openers, uh, home openers at the RE facility uh, the second weekend of December. So, Coach, a busy time, obviously. It's exciting to, to get this going. I can't wait to see what the Mustangs uh, can bring uh, to the table this season. I know Mustang fans are excited, and uh, we'll look forward to that uh, throughout this uh, 2011 12 season. So that's our wrap here on our first episode of Mustang Basketball with Brad Bigler, the third season of this. We want to appreciate uh, appreciate everybody for uh, stopping by and watching this week's show, and we'll come back next week and have highlights from the Mustangs game versus Wisconsin-Milwaukee over in Wisconsin. For the head coach, Brad Bigler, I'm Kelly Loft. Until next time, go Mustangs!